Hi, this is John from the Gadget Helpline. Uh, today we're here to talk to you about the new Amazon Kindle, or the fourth gen as we like to call it. It's a slightly smaller version of the Amazon Kindle. It's released last week along with the Amazon Fire tablet and a couple of other products on there. Today we're going to go through the new features of the Amazon Kindle. We have the original Kindle to do a few comparisons with. We'll talk to you about what we found whilst using it. Well, as you can see from the two Kindles here, the newer Kindle has a uh, notably smaller in this size. It's 30% lighter, which means it's 170 grams less. It has the same size screen, which is quite useful. Um, um, and it's apparently 10% faster on page turning. But the most notable change or addition is the lack of the full QWERTY keyboard off of the bottom of the old one. Um, We'll talk a little bit about this later on, but obviously it shrinks it down quite a lot and it really turns the Kindle into something that is completely handheld and can be held in one hand without really anybody noticing it. One of the major changes in between the two, the new Kindle and the older one, is that on the old one you'll see that there's some volume keys and a 3.5mm headphone jack, along with the micro USB and the power switch on there. The new Kindle has taken away all the um, MP3 functionality completely, so you've got now some micro USB and the power key. Alongside, you've got your page turning buttons. There's nothing on the top and on the side again. And I'll have a look on the back of it and the design of the two. Basically, Amazon have gone out of the way to simplify the device so that it's just an e-reader and this is the budget version of it. So I'll just get these switched on. As you see, both of them start up quite quick. Um, there's not really any major changes to the actual menu screen on here. Uh, apparently there's 10% faster page turning when you're actually reading through to the books, but the actual operating system doesn't really change. The one big change really is that it's taken away a couple of the um, functionality out of the, the testing section, so again the MP3 player and the um, audio books. Not really a huge miss on there. Uh, what the Kindle, the smaller version, does have is a slightly smaller memory version on there. So whereas this original Kindle um, can hold up to 3,500 ebooks, the smaller one can hold up to 1,400. Either way, we can't see it being a massive issue because I don't think anybody owns that many books at all. Um, but apparently, the newer Kindle has the most advanced e-ink screen available. So now what we're going to do is going to focus a little bit more on the new version, tell us some of our faults. We've been using it for a couple of days as our primary e-reader on here. One of the things that's most notable is really the size and the lightness of it. it. Makes it a lot easier to use to transport about. Technically it's pocket size now so you can just slip it in your pocket and wander about with it. Uh, we didn't notice any really ch real change of any of the memory um, and the actual page turning aspects of it. You know, whilst it is quicker, it's not something that really slowed us down in the first place. Um, the refresh screen is slightly easier on the eye, whereas before it would go all black and the text would go white and come across. It's not so much of a jar on there. Um, and it, it, it is quite a bit quicker when you're actually using the whole device, but um, we've only got a few books on there at the moment. One of the bigger changes on there, as we've already stated, is the fact that there is no keyboard on there anymore. Now, whilst we didn't find that this was generally an issue because we didn't do a lot of annotations on the keyboard or add any notes onto there, at the few points that we did ever need to add the keyboard onto there, it's a little bit of a pain to actually navigate through it all. Um, you know, scrolling all the way across just to type in words and where, say, our fingers are quite large, you have to select in, going across, it's very hard to actually jump between things as well. But it's not a major issue if you use your Kindle mainly for reading. If not, you know, there's going to be the new Kindle Fire or the older versions will still be available. So that if you like to have the ability to edit, you know, add things to areas and just to generally write your own stuff, then um, the older Kindle may still be for you. One thing we have noticed, and it's something that happened when we gave it to our partners, was that immediately people notice it and desire it slightly more just because of the size of the actual Kindle. It's not anything that we can sit there and statistically say it's much better, but when people look at the Kindle, the size itself is a lot smarter, a lot sleeker. It's a lot more useful for when you're carrying it about and it can fit in your pockets, your handbags, you know, anything like that very easily. It's very light. All in all, we like the new Kindle. 
it's a nice step up from the last, um, the actual original Kindle books. And with the Amazon Kindle Fire and some other versions coming out in the future, there's definitely a now a new whole range aspect to the Kindle devices. We'd suggest buying the new Kindle if you haven't got the original one. If you're looking for it specifically just for reading books, or equally if it's just a little present for somebody over Christmas time or birthday. It's a great new addition to the range. Go out and get it. This is John from the Gadget Helpline. Thanks for watching.